The infantry equipment program is based upon the Army's combat development guide, which provides the basis for both our tactical doctrine and equipment. The underlying assumptions are that our defence requirements will remain largely unchanged into the next century. Specifically, we foresee no significant change in the role of 1BR Corps in NATO, and the Warsaw Pact will remain the most prominent military threat to Britain. Moreover, the Soviet Union is known to be improving all aspects of its conventional war capability and is expected to continue to upgrade its equipments for the foreseeable future. There is a massive and increasing Soviet capability, especially on the Central Front. Within its area of operation, 1BR Corps will face a numerically superior Soviet force with a wide range of very good armour, mechanised infantry, fire support, aviation and electronic warfare capability. The aim of the infantry equipment programme of the 1980s, 1990s and beyond is to enable us within the all-arms team to defeat this threat. The SA-80's weapon replacement program is nearing fruition. The weapon system is expected to enter service in late 1985. The new weapon system will replace not only the SMG and SLR, but also the LMG and the GPMG in the light role, although the GPMG SF will be retained as a platoon machine gun. The system consists of the L-85A1 rifle and the L-86A1 light support weapon both fed with a common 30-round magazine and firing the new NATO standard 5.56mm ammunition based on the Belgian SS-109 round. Although smaller and lighter than the 7.62 round, the new 5.56mm round has improved performance out to 800 metres. The rifle is issued to combat arm units will have a times four magnification SUSAT optical sight as its primary sight, while the rifle issued to other arms and services will have a conventional iron sight, optimized for 200 meters and low light levels. The rifle has both single shot and automatic fire capability and a battle range of 300 meters, although it will still group to 12 inches at 500 meters if required. It is lighter than the SLR, easy to handle, reliable and accurate. In trials, it has proved a significant improvement in marksmanship scores. Even with the iron sights, it has outshot SLR with the suit sight. It is a very good weapon indeed. The rifle will be issued with a new bayonet of advanced design. The infantry bayonet can also be used as a fighting knife and with the scabbard forms a wire cutter. The scabbard also incorporates a fold-out saw blade and a sharpening stone. The scabbard issued to other arms and services will be the basic shell only and will not include these additional features. The light support weapon has some 80% commonality of parts with the rifle. Like the rifle, it fires from the closed bolt position on either automatic or single shot out to its battle range of 600 metres and beyond. Its accuracy in the single shot mode is particularly impressive. As a result of further development by ITDU, modifications were introduced to the bipod mounting and a shoulder strap and additional hand grip on the butt were incorporated so that the firer has a firmer control of the weapon when firing bursts. The LSW will be issued on a scale of two per infantry section. The SA-80 weapon system is expected to enter service late in 1985, with first issues to troop trial units and depots. Regular infantry battalions should be equipped within the following two years. Law 80 is a relatively low-cost, man-portable anti-tank weapon with a range of up to 500 metres. The weapon will replace both the 84mm Carl Gustav and the 66mm M72. The telescopic disposable launcher, made of Kevlar, 
acts as the packing container for the preloaded projectile. Integral to the launcher is a simple optical sight and a retractable shoulder rest. The projectile is a 94mm rocket with a heat warhead capable of penetrating over 600mm of armour, enough to defeat T-72 in the frontal arc and giving the weapon a very high kill probability. Hit probability at all ranges is significantly improved by the inclusion of an integral spotting rifle with five rounds of a special 9mm spotting ammunition ballistically matched to the main armament. Immediately before firing, the operator extends the launcher tube. This action automatically arms the weapon. Once a target is seen, the weapon is aimed with the optical sight and an allowance is made for range and speed. The spotting rifle is then fired to establish the correct point of aim, and once this is found, the main projectile is fired. The launcher is then discarded. If for any reason the weapon is not fired, it can be closed up and returned to the carrying position. Subsequent opening up once again prepares it for immediate use. To facilitate training, three equipments will be provided. First, there will be drill rounds, consisting of inert weapons for familiarization drills. Second is a classroom trainer to permit simulated engagement of a moving target. And finally, an outdoor practice weapon firing spotting rounds only and incorporating a noise generator to simulate firing the main armament. No other country has a simple light anti-tank weapon which is effective against the frontal armor of a modern tank. And Law 80 has only been made possible by the introduction of high technology production techniques. Although a number of technical problems have arisen during its development, it is anticipated that the user trial will be completed by early 1986 and most units will receive their first issues in 1986 or 1987. Milan is now fully in service and the extended distribution of firing posts will be completed in 1985. This reliable, simple and versatile system will give the battalion an effective anti-tank capability well into the 1990s. To enhance the system, a number of improvements are being made. An improved K warhead with a calibre of 115 millimetres has been a tri-national development and provides a 15 to 20% increase in penetrating power, giving improved single-shot kill probability. It will be available for service in 1985, with production channeled into the War Maintenance Reserve. The Milan Infrared Adapted, or MIRA, thermal imaging site has begun to enter service. The site will be issued on a scale of one per firing post, and will allow identification and engagement of targets at night and in obscuration, such as fog or battlefield smoke. It is powered by a lithium battery and is cooled by air bottles containing pure air under high pressure. These will be refilled by a charger equipment pure air, SIPA, held in the battle group echelon. The introduction of MARA now establishes the requirement for the new field of AFV thermal recognition. Another innovation is the Milan compact turret on Spartan. This equipment consists of an inverted firing post in a simple turret, which permits two missiles to be fired and guided from under armor. The launcher must be reloaded from outside the vehicle, which will carry a first line load of 12 missiles. The system will be issued on a scale of four per mechanized battalion and will provide the basis of the battalion's anti-tank mobile force. MCT will enter service in early 1987. Hit! The latest concept in anti-armor warfare is the use of the mortar in the anti-tank role, MORAT. British Aerospace have an anti-armour bomb called Merlin, which is under joint development with the Ministry of Defence. Merlin will be fired from the existing 81mm mortar without any need for modifications or additional crew. 
Merlin contains a millimetric radar guidance sensor, an electronics package, and a shaped charge warhead. After the bomb leaves the mortar tube, the rear fins are deployed. When the bomb has reached the peak of the trajectory, the guidance system is switched on and the canards are deployed. The sensor scans a 300 meter by 300 meter footprint to locate a moving armor target. It then locks onto the target and uses the canards to steer the bomb onto the top of the target. The Merlin bomb will have a range of about 4,000 meters. Merlin is a totally new concept. No complete rounds have yet been fired, but the individual components of the system have been successfully tested. Assessments by the Royal Armament Research and Development Establishment have indicated that Merlin is technically feasible and wargaming has produced favorable results. In 1985, a decision will be made on the future of the project. If funds can be made available, Merlin could conceivably enter service before 1990. Spyglass is a handheld thermal imager which will allow targets to be detected at night and through most types of battlefield obscuration out to ranges in excess of 4,000 meters. Spyglass is to be issued to the MFCs of regular battalions and the recce platoons of non-mechanized regular battalions. Mechanized recce platoons are to receive OTIS, which is a similar equipment, but slightly larger and heavier. MFCs will be able to position their spyglass alongside their LP7 laser rangefinder on a common mount with an angulation head and small tripod. Like Myra, Spyglass and Otis will need compressed air bottles charged by SEPA. Issues of Spyglass and Otis are expected to begin in early 1986. The existing trench design suffers a number of drawbacks. In particular, it requires a large amount of defence stores, which are unlikely to be available, and it takes a long time to construct. A new design of trench is under examination, which uses split hairpin corrugated iron. The basic item is a sheet of corrugated iron, which is bent over and has castellations at the top end. Two sheets simply interlock to form an arch. It is the strength of this curved shape which allows less reinforcing pickets to be used. Construction is simple. The trench is dug to the normal dimensions. Pickets are fitted along the bottom edges of the shelter trench and the two interlocked sections are lowered into place. Enough units are placed for the length of shelter required and then earth is placed on top. Curved sheets are also used for the revetting of the fire bays at either end of the trench. Here is a completed trench. You may notice that there is no overhead protection over the firing bay. Overhead protection over the firing bay is not always required. The commander should decide whether it is provided for a particular trench in a given situation. The new design of trench is quick and easy to construct. The design uses a modular system and can be extended by further units as desired. Three battalions use the design on exercise Lionheart. A bombardment trial has also been carried out. The result of these trials are being evaluated and it is hoped to introduce split hairpin corrugated iron into service in BOR in 1985. Saxon is the new armoured vehicle which has entered service to provide the regular NATO reinforcement Type A battalions with protected mobility. Saxon carries nine men, a section of eight and a driver. There is adequate stowage inside the vehicle and in external stowage bins for all the section's personal weapons and equipment, including eight Law 80 and combat supplies for 48 hours. Saxon weighs just over 11 tons and has a 150 horsepower diesel engine. It has an excellent performance on roads 
achieving speeds of up to 60 miles an hour, and the road range is in excess of 300 miles. Its cross-country mobility is rather better than a laden four-ton vehicle. Saxon's armour gives the crew better protection than F-3432 against artillery and small arms fire and against mine blast. GPMG is provided for air defence on a DESA Mark 400 mount, which will allow engagements of targets in a 360 degree arc. Saxon's deployment has begun. One King's Own Border carried out the troop trial in 1984. Saxon will be issued to the regular infantry battalions of 1, 19 and 24 brigades and the line of communications JTP 362 battalion. Saxon will allow them to deploy to their positions under armour and the protected mobility will enable them to redeploy in comparative safety. MCV-80 is being developed as the new AFV for the mechanised battalion. It will provide the infantry with the required balance of capacity, mobility, protection and firepower to meet the threat well into the next century. MCV-80 will carry a full section of 10 men, including a vehicle commander, driver and gunner, together with their full equipment and combat supplies for a period of 48 hours. In addition to the crew's personal weapons, eight Law 80 are carried. The compact design of the vehicle allows adequate space for this stowage. MCV-80 will provide the infantry with greatly increased mobility. It is powered by a 550 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, which gives the 25-ton vehicle a power-to-weight ratio in excess of most other armoured fighting vehicles in the world. This power combined with a good suspension system, gives the vehicle an excellent cross-country performance, which will allow the infantry to operate alongside Challenger. Speeds of up to 75 kilometers per hour can be achieved on roads. MCV-80 gives a higher level of protection than FV-432 and provides full collective MBC protection for the crew. The firepower of MCV-80 will be a major improvement over FV-432. The turret-mounted 30mm Raden cannon with power traverse and an image intensifier night sight will give MCV-80 an excellent anti-BMP capability out to a range of 2,000 metres. Correctionally mounted with the Raden is a 7.62mm Hughes chain gun. The Hughes chain gun has been chosen as the vehicle-mounted machine gun for all future AFVs. It fires the standard NATO 7.62 mm round. It will reach out to 2,000 meters and has a steady rate of fire of 600 rounds per minute. It is a reliable machine gun. The external ejection of empty case from the front of the gun and the long bolt dwell time means that fumes inside a turret are reduced by 90% compared with the current GPMG. An air defence graticule is incorporated in the site. Over 200 rounds of APDS and HE rounds for the Raden and 2,007.62 mm rounds for the Hughes chain gun are carried inside the vehicle. MCV-80 underwent a variety of trials with ITDU. Automotive performance was impressive and the vehicle proved to be very reliable. Early in the user trial, it became apparent that the existing design of rear doors would not meet the requirement for allowing the section to debrass on a slope. All section and platoon headquarter MCV-80 are to be fitted with a large one-piece power-operated rear door. The door can start to open before the vehicle comes to a halt. After the section has dismounted, the vehicle can move away while the door is still closing. For the final part of the user trial, the Irish Guards received four vehicles in BAOR. The MCV-80 equipped platoon took part in Exercise Lionheart. The Irish Guards were delighted with the performance of MCV-80, in particular with its greatly improved mobility when compared with FV-432. 
The results of the trial with MCV-80 are being examined, and organizational changes, including a probable increase in the manpower of the mechanized battalion and the creation of additional NCO posts, are under consideration. Best use must be made of the mobility, protection, and especially the firepower of MCV-80, so that the infantry can take maximum advantage of its enhanced capability when it starts to enter service in 1988. It will be issued on a scale of 45 to each mechanized battalion. Within this short video, we have illustrated the major operational requirements projects for the infantry, most of which will begin to enter service within the next three years, and all of which will enable the infantry to successfully meet the threat. One final item. With every new piece of equipment, there is always an adjustment required to accommodate it within existing methods of operation. Guardsmen and RSMs everywhere will be relieved to know that a new drill has been developed and approved for the SA-80 rifle.